so uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's my pleasure to introduce uh, the session for our second of the monthly PD sessions. My name is Randy Labonte. I work with eCampus Alberta to support the online PD and communities uh, and these sessions. And it certainly is a pleasure uh, for me to introduce the session today, which is on successful models of e-learning for Aboriginal leaders. Uh, Mavis <coughs> is joining us to share some of the stories and the research that she has uh, they have created in, in SC Cyber uh, School as well, uh, or sort of SC Cyber e-learning community, I should say, precisely. Um, some of you may know Mavis, and I've had the pleasure of meeting Mavis uh, on a number, couple of occasions as well. She's a grad of, of the UFC, where in her master's work, uh, she was specializing in ed tech. And from there, she actually, uh, one of the proposals that she did was how to start a virtual school and based on that master's work, helped found with Martin uh, the Sunchild e-learning community. She's been teaching for over 15 years and also developing curriculum for Alberta education in the past. I know that uh, we share a common um, connection to uh, some folks around Rocky View Virtual School as well. That's in the past. In June of 2008, Mavis joined full time at the SC Cyber uh, e-learning community school for as principal and has brought a very strong pedagogical focus. I had the pleasure of, of spending some time with both Martin and Mavis um, in one of the sites and was witnessed firsthand some of the successes that they're, they're having. The school is serving over 300 students right now in the province of Alberta as well as the North Northwest Territories and reaching out into 20 First Nation communities. And they are boasting uh, completion rates of over 17% and uh, just an amazing statistic when you consider both the online community as well as the, the communities that they're servicing. So it's our pleasure to have Mavis here today to share some of the ideas and experiences and the research uh, that was done through Mount Royal and, and Norman Bond as part of that uh, and learn a little bit about some of the strategies that they're putting into place that we might be able to take and adopt in our own settings. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Mavis. Thanks, Randy. And uh, I'll put my video on just to say hi to everybody. Um, before we start, has anybody heard of SC Cyber eLearning before? Uh, give a check mark yes if you have, and no if you haven't. So, have you heard of SC Cyber eLearning community before? Formerly known as Fun Child eLearning, but uh, now we have uh, renamed ourselves SC Cyber eLearning. Just getting a feel for our audience to see who's heard of us and who hasn't heard of us. So. Yes, pretty even here. So. so I'll get started here. And welcome and thanks for uh, joining us today here. So uh, a year ago or so, um, we did have um, a study done by Norm Vaughn there. Uh, Herman, did you have a question? Or? Okay. And so here we took a look at um, the context of the study, the methodology and finding, and then we'll go into the next step here. So for SC Cyber eLearning, uh, started at uh, Rocky Mountain House at the reserve of a Sun Child. And so here, the First Nation had around 732 people uh, live on their reserves there. So SC Cyber started back in 2000, and a group of, of um, solution-minded founders saw the lack of education on the reserves and also wanted to take a look at reaching average students throughout Alberta here. And there are unique challenges that the marginalized students of uh, First Nation Reserves, um, you know, go through. They have lots of legal situations, family situations, and a lot of relocation and instability in their living situations there. So we have found through our 13 years of experience here with working with uh, Aboriginal students that most of them are actually adults, and they really want to upgrade and build a better future for themselves and for the families here. 
So uh, what we've done is that uh, through the years, we've kind of honed the whole system of e-learning and our model. And we set up um, the face-to-face -face learning centers with local mentors. And so the reserve location would um, hire somebody to work with us as a mentor. And we would have our own certified online teachers work with us um, and teach the Alberta education curriculum and be all fully accredited and, and of course, certified. And we are what you would call 100% synchronous. So all our courses are presented uh, through a synchronous tutorial live and, of course, recorded for students to access afterwards. So back in the study there, there was around uh, 21 uh, site locations that we worked with. And each of these have different setups, like at Chinnakee, they have a full building and they take up the whole floor here, which uh, they overlook the uh, Rocky Mountains. And our urban site in Calgary here, they have a, a room where it's full of computers and then the students ride on the C train and then come on to uh, meet with our mentor and start working on the courses and of course log in and meet with their teachers at the appointed time there. So the centers all are, um, you know, unique to their own setup. And, uh, but usually if you a room with a bank of computers and a mentor that uh, oversees that group of students there. And so uh, back in the study, it was around 26 mentors for 21 sites. Currently, we're around over 25 sites and probably around 35 mentors there. And that's uh, a correct point there that Randy just texted there, saying that it is really important that we have that relationship built with our teachers and the students there. Having that connection is the key to success. But another triangulation is our mentor who works with the students there. So Jenny was one of our mentors and Richard's one of our mentors there. And so that type of work, along with our teachers, complete the triangle of of uh, working with the students here. So we have students, teachers, and mentors in conjunction working together. Of course, we uh, provide the full um, gamut of Alberta education and, of course, all of the courses from 7 to 12. And, um, and of course, students can gain the whole um, Alberta high school diploma through us. We also are in partnership for post-secondary um, work. So we offer an OGPO course with Nate. And uh, currently we're in the work to actually do a power engineering five course where students actually only require probably grade 11 math or science requirements and then can go into the power engineering and write the first after test and then start going into that field where it's very high demand right now. And with our corporate sponsorship, those students can probably get some um, connections to get uh, field experience with those students as well there. So back in the study, there's around 300 students. Uh, currently, we're actually at 375 students. And our split, uh, interestingly, two years ago was 60% uh, female and then 33% uh, or 40% male there. I think right now it's more even. You can see the profiles that a uh, lot of students were not working, didn't have internet access, and so um, they were looking to build their future. And education is a route towards that. One of our uh, blended learning uh, discoveries and discussions with Norm Vaughn is reading through uh, the blended learning in higher education to take a look at that uh, facilitator's role and working with our teachers and with our mentors to build a better uh, model and setup. So you can see here that uh, with various um, models of education, we have the traditional higher education here, where it just is synchronous and on campus. So it's limited to this only this bottom left quadrant here. Uh, when you have just online learning, that's asynchronous no direct contact of live instruction, and just solely online, then you only um, take up that uh, 
top quadrant there. If you blend in with the online blended, there's some um, leading with the face-to-face, -face, then you kind of enlarge your circle a bit more here. But with uh, our model here, we, we have an on-campus section where the students are with the mentors, but we're online with our teachers, and yet, and then also synchronous with the on campus with our face-to-face -face mentor there, but also synchronous with our teachers online as well. So we encompass the whole red circle here, you can see, of the spectrum of blended learning of on-campus online versus asynchronous and synchronous. I'm kind of taking the best of all worlds here. So we're taking a look at, uh, in the study here, some of the advantages of SE library learning, some of the challenges we face, and some of the recommendations for program improvement. And we're always looking for ways to improve because, uh, as you know, in technology, nothing stays uh, stagnant. And we're always taking a look at the next step to serve our students more. And so we take a look at, um, this is the methodology of the study itself, and then the interviews with people involved in the site visits here. So in the findings here um, is outlined in line with the seven principles of good practice. So from Chickory and Gam Gamson there, you can see that uh, some of the good principles of, of uh, good practice is to encourage contact between students and teachers, develop uh, reciprocity and cooperation between students, encourage active learning, give prompt feedback, emphasize time on task, communicate high expectations, and respect diverse talents and ways of learning. So against this backdrop, we'll take a look at the findings here. And of course, as uh, noted by Randy there, with uh, encouraging the contact between students and teachers, that always increases motivation, uh, involvement. So truly, we stress that you know, they create that relationship between students and teachers there. Because of that relationship is built through online, you have students then build confidence. They, they have said, I've learned new ideas and concepts in the online tutorials and then are practicing with the mentors help in the classroom. And so you can see how it's the online blended with the face-to-face -face with our mentors in the classroom there. Now, some of our mentors are, have varying uh, backgrounds. Some of them are certified teachers. Uh, others are, you know, just very organized individuals that are um, a high school graduate. So it just uh, depends on the reserve location. But um, each mentor is trained with us before they join in to be a mentor there. And so here the students have said, almost like having two teachers for all my courses, because they feel that they have that support there. And so even though there's the online aspect, they feel like they have a teacher right beside them all the time, alongside with the mentor there. Uh, some of the challenges we may face is, of course, the lack of educational experience. And so we uh, ask our mentors to, you know, uh, elicit help from our certified teachers there. And sometimes there's not a positive relationship of all the students, so depending on the mentor relationship of students there. But it depends on the site and so that has some variance here but over the time we have seen uh, a stronger influx of mentor uh, involvement with our program here and that's due to our online training program that's been much more successful in the last couple of years that we've implemented that so we can see that sometimes now some of our sites are actually having more than one mentor at each center so they can find students can find somebody to relate to and we do uh, now have implemented a continuous training program throughout the year where we have mentor and monthly meetings uh, similar to the PD Day conference here that you can see that we would meet with all our mentors online instead. Uh, some of our teachers feel that their workload may be more time intensive, but we have a, a good balance with that right now too. And we were having um, better success with the online teachers coming to our various sites there. So having that relationship online now comes full circle when the teachers actually meet some of these students um, 
sometimes due to the logistics, they cannot, of course, meet all the students, but um, they'll try to meet at certain locations there. So um, after the study was done, we had our team of teachers actually do PD and actually visit um, some site locations in the area there. So they would go on the reserve, meet, go to the site locations, and uh, meet up with the students there. So the second um, factor of um, good practice is to develop cooperation among students. And so learning increases with the team effort, and we're trying to incorporate more collaborative and social um, involvement in learning there. And so students can interact with each other at the center. So they may do presentations to each other at the center there. Um, other times they'll participate in an online session, and then they can uh, collaborate online with their um, other fellow students in the courses throughout Alberta and Northwest Territories there. Uh, we also have um, discussion boards and um, other courses are now implementing voice thread, taking a look at collaboration to uh, other uses of technology there. And through that collaboration, students within that um, site also is building a sense of community and uh, belonging there. We really encourage our mentors to build that social side to engage students to make them feel like they're part of something. And having that involvement can be as simple as having a lunch area and some centers have a pool table to socialize and relax or a, a hangout area. So they don't feel like they're going to school anymore. And granted, the average age of our students is around 24 years old. So they're mostly adults in their area. And that, in a sense, sets the role models for our younger students to actually to see that they can actually achieve their goals. And some uh, site locations actually even set up their own student council and perform um, social activities and dances and fundraisers and so on and so forth. So they're creating their own sense of community. And the best part is that they're building confidence and a sense of belonging here. Uh, through that, the collaboration is also lends itself towards our mentors. They want to take a look at uh, input in terms of learning, student learning issues. So what we've done here is actually set up a, a forum in our uh, Moodle there for our mentors solely that they only have access to and they can post um, issues and then have other mentors respond to it in an asynchronous manner there. So how do we um, encourage active learning in our school? And so we know that listening doesn't produce this deep learning, so we need to have the students actually uh, interact with the material and apply the le new learning to daily life and relate the topic to past experiences. And so majority of it, of course, is learning uh, online, discussing, and kind of interacting with the mentor, um, with the material there. They're learning other life skills as they're doing school here. But uh, also our courses are all developed by our teachers and they have, every lesson has an interactive piece in it. And so there's an active sense of engagement there on top of the live interaction here that we utilize uh, through Blackboard Collaborate. So oftentimes teachers would present, model a concept, and then have the students work through the concept themselves in an interactive manner here, live with the teacher during the tutorial sessions there. Some of the barriers they may face uh, in this kind of new setting is that because some of them are older and we do have students in their 50s and 60s who um, you know, are not used to e-learning, but over time they can they, uh, you know, watch over the younger students and then they actually just pick it up quite quick, readily here. Some may have slow internet connection, but nowadays uh, things are a lot better and it's, uh, connectivity is not really an issue any longer. And so some of the challenges, uh, they may be again where they save the work, kind of like where the dog ate their uh, homework. Now it's like they don't know where they saved it. So excuses change, but uh, they're always some excuse out there. 
But probably one of the side tracks of active learning is the distraction of the internet. And so it takes a lot of discipline and work with the mentors to kind of get the students to refocus and, and uh, re-engage again. So we've had some of the sites improve their technology and then take a look at um, having all the students complete the online orientation module before they begin their academic studies. And that has really improved our success rates with students that they can just test it out to see if e-learning is um, something that they can work with. And then here they can find that um, that e-learning does suit them and then they feel confident to uh, continue on that way. So the fourth um, level of um, good practice is to give prompt feedback. And uh, knowing what you, you know and don't know focuses students on learning. And here at SE Cyber, we really um, emphasize the importance of uh, taking a look at the marking of our teachers and the feedback from the teachers to do corrections. And so that's exactly where we want to focus on what you don't know so that you can better be better prepared for your exams the next time around. So a reflection is a critical aspect in our learning. And here, the students, of course, have access to grades online. And we have basically an, a weekly report card. So all our marks are all updated and marked um, every Monday morning at 9 a.m. And so from our uh, mentors, you can download all the marks for all their students. We have a, we've designed a, a specialized system um, from Moodle to actually have each of our site mentors be able to download the progress of every student, know the marks of um, all assignments, but we also mark not just what uh, their actual mark is right now, but we actually also give them an average of what assignments they've handed in only. So they've handed in five assignments out of 10 assignments so far. The five assignments, if they've had 80% on all five, that would be the average on completed mark there. And they would have an 80%. But of course, if you marked it out of the 10 assignments and five were uh, zeroed out, then you see, see that the actual mark is 40%. We wouldn't, didn't want to demoralize students by seeing this actual mark is always this you know, really low mark all the time. But by seeing the 80, they can see that they're doing quality work, they just have to catch up. And some students just can't complete the work within the five month time period, which is fine. We have extension times and uh, or else we can continue on, on to the next semester there. But they always know and have feedback from our teachers on a regular basis and that allows students to be able to respond. But also it sets up uh, the weekly meeting that the mentor has with the students to set weekly goals as to what they want to do the following week there. And so if you have a question, they can get immediate answers from the mentor or online teacher. And then getting the report cards, as I indicated, they get two columns here, an average for assignments completed and an average for all assignments, including the ones not completed. So those are the two marks that they get on a weekly basis. And then the mentor works with the students. So there's a setup of educational support that we provide our students. And the next one is, of course, emphasize time on task. And of course, we um, you know, tell students, if you want to be good at something, you do have to put time into it. And then you have to put the energy into it so that you actually do get it. Learning, unfortunately, is not by osmosis. So you do have to put the time into it here. And so we do have a set timeline as to what our expectations are by our teachers. But students find that the e-learning centers, it's always quiet. And they find that they don't get this drama happening like a normal school. When they're on the computer, they're focused. Um, they're not intimidated by being online. And the technology has really helped a lot of students come out of their shell 
to actually ask questions online. And in the world of texting, it's, uh, you know, it's really easy to communicate now. And uh, people have, students have overcome that barrier of fear, especially when they've had a bad experience with school in general in the past. And, and when they're coming back to a setting that they're not sure of, and then they try something and they actually get great uh, feedback online from uh, a mark assignment, that slowly builds the confidence. And it's great to see that when you see the confidence being built back into a student, realizing that they are capable of doing the work, it's really exciting to see that happen. And so the learning centers, we work with the mentors to create a space and a quiet place to learn. And, you know, and uh, some students have said it's not like my home. We want to create this environment that's conducive to allow them to focus on work and so they have that there's no distractions at their uh, e-learning site. And we uh, emphasize them working at the e-learning site so that not only do they have a sense of community, but they have a sense of accountability, but they also have that kind of work ethic where you have to go somewhere to do work. And so um, it's kind of building forward so that when they go to post-secondary schooling after this or go to uh, into the workforce, they have that work ethic built into them. The students can work at their own pace, and as they build their confidence, they actually can speed up. And even this past semester, we've had students finish courses in a month or so just because they just are focused about it. And they don't have to worry about other people in the room. And even at some of these e-learning sites, um, a girl just had a baby six months ago, and she would bring her baby to the e-learning site. And the rest of the students didn't mind it, and the baby was quiet. And so they're able to just have her continue her life and build her life, despite the fact that she just had a baby six months earlier. And throughout our whole program and our all our courses, not only are they accredited, but of course, they are fully rigorous as in any other um, online school here. And so we set a high expectation, we maintain a rigor, and we also tell our students not to expect less than themselves. We hear discussions that are negative. Uh, you know, the common thing that students always say is, oh, I, I can't do math. And with that kind of negative self-talk, uh, it kind of adds the demoralization. So we're trying to train our students to have high expectations for self that they can do math. They just need to put a little bit of time into it or actually have to revamp how they think about math. And so we set that up. But at each of our centers, we set up also a wall of success so the student has completed their um, course. We, set, we send them a certificate to post. And they can see their names up there and see the fellow students' names up there. And it wants them, it kind of wants them to set up their game. And they all want to graduate from high school. And so we're constantly monitoring the students, kind of troubleshooting any little things that come by. And sometimes they just need a week off because there has been a death in the family or issues with um, domestically. So uh, we just accommodate and make those accommodations. So once they're back and ready to work again, then we work with them to continue on where they left off. And it's great to see that, um, you know, online teachers can talk to them, but also uh, students can work on their own pace as well. And the seventh one here is to respect the diverse talents and ways of learning. And of course, people learn differently by reading, listening, and doing, and we have different strengths. And so, of course, we take this into consideration with the multiple intelligences. But um, uh, recently, we've incorporated uh, Read Speaker, which is where um, all our lessons throughout all 80 courses are all read online by, the, by a computer reader here. And that has helped with the literacy. And we, interestingly, we have that used a lot in our math courses as well. So it's just not utilized in our literacy and numeracy courses. It's a way for students. And I promote it as a way, another way to, uh, to um, enhance their oral tradition is by listening to the lesson there. So, and also to give uh, students eyes a rest from the computer at times. And so by adding this uh, aspect there, 
they can uh, have all their intelligences kind of targeted. Of course, with the online sessions, with the live interaction. And then we have um, self pacing, so of course, they can um, take a look at the archives and play them again or for, fast forward to the section that they needed help with. But, uh, you know, it's just great to, for memory for students to rehash and replay certain sections of examples, especially in math, that are very difficult for them to grasp. And they can play that over and over again. But the best part of our program is the flexibility. We allow for uh, alternative learning tasks in the sense that we allow for more time and allow for students with extensions and having that, um, you know, letting them take ownership and autonomy over their learning there. Many of our students are single parents or have uh, many children. And so sometimes they can log in from home. And so by allowing that flexibility, they can do assignments at two in the morning if they wish to do it. Um, but it just allows them to not be tied to a certain location. And so they can work from other locations if they have the internet access there. So one of our challenges is always getting students to come to live sessions. But um, any um, usage of archives of sessions have always been uh, shown to allow students to successfully complete the courses there. And when they make education priority, they are going to succeed in life. And we always say that we're here for them when they're ready to do schooling. And so, um, and they know that they're all part of it here. And throughout our years, we've uh, learned to build our programs from our clients, um, suggestions that they've asked for, and and uh, you know, two years ago when we did the study, we incorporated a lot of the aspects of the recommendations as well. We're always looking for ways to improve. And uh, now we are, um, have had lots of success with uh, federal um, support. And so all students under 19 will be supported to come to our program um, through the federal government now. And we have students over 20 or over 19 supported by the provincial government to take training through us as well. So we're having all the financial support that, that there's only recently that we've had. Initially, most of our support came from um, our corporate sponsors. And they saw the real, real value for our students uh, to add community and education opportunities for the reserve locations there. And um, that's about it for now. I'll try to open it up for questions because I'm thinking there's some questions out there. Sorry, I maybe said we're only using one mic at a time. <clears throat> I just uh, wanted to, at this point, say yes, thank you for that quick overview and uh, I have many, many questions, but I'd like to open it up to the floor for folks here to either text in a question in the text chat area or use the mic. I'll get off the mic and if you have a question to Mavis, please. So I see a couple of people texting in there. Um, the, I just wanted to, to, to say this, <clears throat> is having done some research both in BC as well as in Alberta in online schools, certainly was taken by the pedagogy, the dedication, the instructional design, the approaches, and more importantly, uh, the levels of commitment. I mean, the, the, what you noted, Mavis, with regards to the, the interaction and direct contact between teacher and student, but also the supporting of cooperation amongst the students themselves in there, the active learning, the promoting and prompting for feedback on a constant basis, uh, you know, really a design looking at focusing on task at, all the time. But your expectations and, and your ability to balance and respect diversity and differences, I guess I was struck more importantly uh, by your belief and the beliefs of people that are leading in, in the uh, SC Cyber e-learning community approach. They just believe in the people and the students themselves that are there. And that's, uh, I think, worthy of note. Question for you there, Mavis.
All right, Mavis, in the text chat, and I turned your mic off, so you have to turn it back on. No problem. I was just trying to uh, go through the question there. What was it to my input for students enrolled in professional education where practical skills are to be taught? Um, this is so are you talking about, I guess I'm trying to fully understand the question before I can target. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Okay, I open it up for two two microphones at the same time. Go ahead, Sylvia. So, so, uh, what uh, because uh, like you know, I can just give you my background coming from the developing country and uh, knowing the importance of the technology and enhancing and reaching to the group of um, learners who cannot come to the institution. I was just thinking that um, what has come out as a learning experience is some of the practical skills which are to be taught. Um, how can that be enhanced through using the, the modern technology? And I know that nowadays with um, the dummies and all those things, but my another connection was the cost. Um, like, you know, in regard to cost, tends to be much more higher when we use all those technologies. So maybe based on the experience which Mavis, uh, Mavis has, uh, she can guide us as how to go about in those areas. Uh, that's a great question and, and, uh, and taking a look at overcoming the, the barriers of online and is that part of the, the hands-on and uh, practical skills there. And uh, through our experience, um, um, one of our focuses is to uh, train in the trades area. And so what we've done in the past is that we would um, do the coursework online and work with the students to get them to um, the book work, you could say. And then once they're ready, we would have a concentrated hands-on um, practical skills section, three weeks long, uh, maybe depending on what the practice skill is, and then they would do an intensive on-site, hands-on experience that way. And that would minimize costs instead of trying to transfer students throughout uh, you know, a whole year to get an hour here or there, the, the practical skills. We would then do a concentrated um, session uh, on-site with the machinery or the different welding uh, technology, and then that. And so in your uh, situation, the nursing could be a much more of a set practice in that sense. So hopefully I provide some um, help towards the question there. Yeah, thanks, Davis. There was a couple of questions that were a little earlier about the uh, the numbers of students enrolled. Are they been steady at around 300? And how long is the orientation, or is there a fee for the orientation you provide online before? Yeah, um, our students have grown steadily over the years, and so uh, right now, currently, uh, we've, this study was done two years ago, and so it was around 300 students. Now we're actually uh, closer to 400 students now. We're uh, floating around the 380 mark right now here, and so uh, we are constantly growing, and um, one of the factors of why we're growing more now is uh, due to the new um, federal government funding for our students under 19 so that students can access um, e-learning from any reserve school as well. So that has uh, enhanced our uh, access there to set up sites at reserve school locations. And in terms of the uh, student orientation, um, that, that is, um, we could say we don't charge for it per se, but it's part of the orientation and training for our mentors and students at the same time there. So the orientation is a, a one credit CPS course. So it can take up to a week to complete for a student, um, but um, usually we don't have a, a fee for the student orientation. We usually just charge by the semester. 
uh, after they've completed the orientation. And so we, even for a site location, we don't um, charge fees until after a six week trial period. So um, site locations uh, can actually see if e-learning works for that student without being um, you know, charged for a tuition fee if they're not sure that student's ready for e-learning or not. And so we, they, they, not only do they have a student orientation course to see if they can complete that course, but uh, they can also have them, if the student did complete it, then they can register into the red, regular courses and still have six weeks uh, before the final cutoff date to actually try uh, the courses online. So that gives a lot of um, room for the site locations to see if you're learning for that student or not, and then, and then see what's the best fit there. So we say that uh, e-learning is an option for all our students. It's not the magic bullet, but we do want to improve and ensure that we uh, work the best we can to ensure that uh, the students are fully engaged into learning as best as possible. And we try to troubleshoot any issues that might come about if e-learning isn't the best fit for them. So sometimes we work with the site location to offer some e-learning courses and then some face-to-face, -face, depending on the student's life and learning. So, uh, question, uh, are you planning to use the study outcomes in developing countries? Um, that's an interesting question. We haven't thought too much abroad. Uh, we have thought about doing more of an international school aspect, such as, such as Maybe in the future, we would probably go to more conferences abroad there. Yeah, let me chime in on that question, actually. And the practices that I, you, I, I witnessed firsthand, Mavis, um, in terms of what you're doing and very well described here, are actually resonating well as approaches that are successful in other areas. So in answer to the question, the, the, uh, the study outcomes are mirroring some of the other literature and research on successful blended practices. Uh, and I think that, that those principles certainly can be applied in many, many other situations. And the principles that you've embraced here and provided to us really exemplify that which is successful engaging learning, whether it be used, used through technology or simply totally at a distance. I think all of those principles really are very sound and strong and supported in a lot of online theories and other uh, approaches. So, but to see a practical example is, is terrific. I'm wondering because part of the successful, the large part of the success of the model is the engagement at that local community level. So I'm wondering maybe if you maybe comment a little bit about what are the strategies that you do to kind of engage mentors and have the band involvement and support for what you're doing, how you actually get that happening at the local level within the, those, those communities. Yeah, that's a great question. And oftentimes we have the communities come to us and uh, request a meeting. Uh, we may phone in and then ask uh, if they're interested. And then we have uh, community meetings with the band and council members to um, inform the whole community as to what the e-learning program is about. So they as a community see the presentation and then they make the decision whether they want us to be part of their educational options and offerings within the community there. And through that, um, you know, it really is, does come down to uh, word of mouth. And so uh, oftentimes they'll hear from other reserve locations how it's been successful and they want that for themselves too. And so we work with them closely and um, take a look at uh, seeing where the interest is. And um, it's been great to see new sites who have started to uh, come with us uh, recently this past year here. Um, they've been they've known about us many uh, many years, but uh, they weren't able to because of the funding structures. But because the federal government uh, has uh, has to, uh, provided the support for the under 19, that has really helped with a lot of the reserve locations to um, come on board in, from the financial aspect. And so they are the ones who are seeing the support, and we see it working in other communities. So they just have that confidence that, and we're not fly-by-night type of operation. <laughs> We've been here over 13 years, 
and we're we always want to take a look at growing our, our um, technology and our growth here. And um, this year alone, we set up all our courses to be 100% uh, uh, mobile learning. So we've had students log in from phones and um, check their lessons online. And, and uh, so uh, technology keeps growing, and we just keep wanting to just right be on the, the crest of that. And so it's great that we can have all our lessons shift all to HTML5 and uh, get that all set up. It, it takes a lot of work to, you know, get on my team of uh, 80 courses and, and teachers on board to get this done. But it's, uh, we just get it done, and then and then, and then the students have access there of the latest and greatest technologies there. So it's been it's always been exciting to see what's new on the horizon and uh, we're always trying to take a look at improving and being better and really in the end it's just being solution minded um, if you find something that's not working you just take a look at what can we do to make it work and uh, you know being in part of a e-learning community is always both that way wow that's a, that's amazing uh, uh, really excellent leadership uh, and uh, the approaches that you're practicing are well very very sound I think that we all can certainly learn from some of the work that Sue and uh, Martin have done in SC cyber e-learning it's uh, it is very well worth it but even for those of us here uh, the takeaways you know are, are pretty strong in terms of the key points uh, that Mavis had articulated around the engagement the high expectations uh, the believing in people who are in those communities and giving them immediate feedback is really, really important and encouraging them. I think that that whole dedication uh, and the commitment to success, uh, you just feel that when you walk into one of these, these, these sites. And the ownership that is shared both by not only within the community and the mentors that are in the rooms, but also by the students themselves within there. And uh, that's just a cultural, supportive, High expectation engagement strategy. I think that is just, it, it, in all honesty, Mavis, it, it just comes from the instructional leadership and the design approaches that uh, both you and Martin have committed to and, and are so passionate about. And it just breeds into those communities. So I really thank you for the opportunity to share. I know there's a few people that did have to run, but to share those insights as well, and would like to obviously officially thank you on behalf of the entire group here. Uh, and for your presentation, certainly looking forward to learning more and keeping in touch as we go through this, Mavis. And I think what we'll do is we'll take a few questions after we, we kick off the recording, anyone that wants to ask you one-on-one. -on -one. But on behalf of the group uh, and uh, on behalf of eCampus Alberta, just wanted to thank you for a very uh, quick overview, but key points in terms of the successes that you've had. That's great. Thank you, Randy, for this opportunity and really, uh, um, I want to thank you for your um, vote of confidence and it's great to see that you're able to experience it yourself and so uh, yeah that's the best way to know something is to kind of see it yourself firsthand and when you do see it it is um, it is really uh, gratifying to see the success of students and to feel that hope uh, in students there and so we are always trying to improve on that and so always taking a look at including the you know the next pedagogy that will um, increase more engagement to build better learning in our students there. So thank you for the time. Yeah, well